Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. Today we're revisiting the Chevy Bolt with its refreshed design. The last one we reviewed was a 2017 model. Between then and now, there has been quite a bit of news about this vehicle surrounding its battery recalls. But with that finally out of the way, I'm looking forward to seeing what's new in this EV. The Bolt is one of the few EVs that has a starting price below $30,000. The 1LT model, which we have today, starts at around $27,500, and the 2LT starts at around $30,700. New Bolts are eligible for a federal tax credit of up to $7,500, so if you're personally eligible, you can take advantage of that. Both trims have an EPA estimated range of 259 miles, are equipped with a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack, and get an EPA estimate of 120 miles per gallon equivalent. This EV can also DC fast charge 100 miles in 30 minutes. Later in the video, we'll be testing out its charging rate as well as going into more detail on the battery and motors. Let's move on to the updated stylings of the Bolt. The refresh of the Bolt happened back in 2022, but it's the first time I'm getting a closer look at it, so let's do a quick walk around. The redesigned exterior includes new LED headlights, hood, tail lights, wheels, and basically a whole new front end. To me, the old design looks like it was smiling, you know, just happy to be included. Versus the new design, it seems fierce and its lights resemble the eyes of a robot. In the back, you can also see the tail lights have become slimmer and longer. Included in this trim are the standard 17-inch silver painted aluminum wheels, but you can upgrade to the machined aluminum wheels with carbon flash painted pockets. You can choose from seven different paint colors and this particular Chevy Bolt is painted in mosaic black metallic. Let's check out the cargo space. The cargo room with the rear seats up is 16.6 cubic feet, and with the seats down, it goes up to 57 cubic feet. With the seats down, you get a useful amount of room and you can easily load items. Under the hood, you don't have any extra storage for a front trunk. All of the power electronics are exposed for easy servicing. The dimensions come in at 163.2 inches in overall length, 69.5 inches in width without mirrors, and a ground clearance of 5.35 inches. The Bolt is much shorter in length when compared to the Model 3. However, it sits much higher, so getting in and out of the Bolt is easier than the Model 3. The cabin is looking polished with new seats and a flat bottom steering wheel. These seats are the cloth trim and are a little more comfortable than before. Standard is a six-way manual driver's seat, so you have a few adjustment options. The steering wheel has controls on the front and volume up and down buttons behind the steering wheel on the right side. The paddle here is for region on demand, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. We also see some improvements with the new infotainment system and this 10.2 inch touchscreen. It's nice having a bigger screen when using the backup camera. The view is pretty good. There are no parking sensors on this car, but you do have the option to add rear park assist. You have some control on the screen and buttons below to adjust the climate. There are also dials on the side to adjust the volume, power, and switch through your screen. The infotainment system is pretty basic, but has what you'll need. On here, you can view and customize charging schedules, view efficiency and range, and connect to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. In front is the 8-inch display that shows your driving stats, range, and other real-time information. The shifter has been replaced with this row of buttons down here. I like this option. It makes sense in an EV since you're not actually shifting any gears. We also have a new button here to enable one pedal driving. In the center down here is an opening that can fit a small to medium sized purse. It's a good use for space when I don't have the passenger side available to put my bag down. There's also a USB-A, USB-C, and a 12 volt port, though it's a little tough to access down here. When you're plugging in your phone, make sure not to push this very large, easy to press traction control off button. I'm not sure why it's located here and so large considering the safety consequences of turning off traction control accidentally. The cabin is spacious. You'd think your passengers would be squished based on the size of the car, but there seems to be good leg and headroom. The back seats also have adequate space for passengers, so long as the front seats aren't pushed all the way back. Since this car was built from the ground up as an EV, you don't have a drive shaft down the middle, giving it a flat floor. If you really need a little more room, you can always go for the Bolt EUV. Kai would be more than happy to ride along in the back. Sorry Kai, you're not allowed in there. But we do have Kaya number two. Kaya would be more than happy to ride along in the back. Mm -hmm. 
We are currently fully charged and the odometer is at 1,275 miles. Later on, we'll check back in on the range before we fast charge it. There are different driving modes with this EV. The first one is sport mode, and you can turn that on with the button that's right here below. This mode gives you a more responsive acceleration, and the Bolt isn't the quickest. It does zero to 60 in six and a half seconds. Next is one pedal driving, and you can turn that on with the button that's right here. Once you turn it on, it stays on for every drive until you turn it off. With one pedal driving, you use the accelerator to slow down or come to a complete stop. You don't need to use the actual physical brakes. However, if needed, you can press on the brakes. When you turn one pedal driving off and you let off the accelerator, your car will continue to coast, just like in a gas car. Behind the steering wheel on the left side is your region on demand paddle, and you use this to manually control your region when one pedal driving is turned off. You can also use the region on demand paddle with one pedal driving enabled, so you can get a stronger deceleration. The visibility from this car is pretty good. I have a good view out every angle. There's a fair amount of road noise coming into the car, especially while we're driving on the freeway. The Bolt drives smoothly and has good steering feedback. It's excellent for city life and your commutes to work. Time for the technical stats. This car has a single permanent magnet motor position on the front axle. It's able to produce 150 kilowatts or 200 horsepower and 266 foot-pounds of torque. The battery on this car is comprised of lithium-ion pouch cells, 288 of them to be precise. The battery cells are liquid-cooled so it can still perform well in the hot summer and fast charge without overheating. They're located on the bottom of the car and make up the floor. The battery pack weighs 947 pounds, so it gives this car a low center of gravity. This car is still using a traditional resistive heater and hasn't been upgraded to a heat pump, so you may see some extra range loss in the colder months. To charge the car, you'll be using the J-Connector for AC charging and CCS for DC fast charging. The onboard charger has been upgraded on this model and can now do up to 11.5 kilowatts of charging on a 240 volt EVSE. The Chevy Bolt's biggest drawback is probably its fast charging. While it can charge with CCS, it's not quick. Chevy has it listed on their site that it can charge up to 100 miles in 30 minutes, but they don't have the max charging rate listed anywhere. I've seen some third party sites say that the maximum charging rate is only 50 kilowatts, but we'll test that out for ourselves. Let's check in on our range. The battery now is at around 10%. The car doesn't display percentage, but rather shows these bars, so each tab is about 5%. Our odometer is at 1,511 miles. That means we got 236 miles from our charge. That puts us right on target with the EPA estimated range. I'm plugging into a 100 kilowatt Delta EVgo fast charger because I would feel guilty taking the spot of a 350 kilowatt charger since this bolt can't take up to 100 kilowatts. As expected, this car hovers around 50 kilowatts during its fast charging session. At its highest, it was able to achieve 53 kilowatts. At around 60% state of charge, the charging rate started to taper down until we stopped our charge at 80%. I made up a second graph which adjusts the scale on the left side. The fastest charging EVs today with battery packs under 100 kilowatt hours charge between 200 and 300 kilowatts. This graph can give a better sense of scale for how slow this car charges. Most EVs from our testing slow down to 50 kilowatts when they hit 80%, whereas this one starts there. It does meet Chevy's expected 100 miles in 30 minutes. I guess that's not as impressive as it sounds. In total, it took an hour and 7 minutes to go from 10 to 80%. Chevy really needs to work on this charging rate. At a maximum of around 50 kilowatts, this car has a C rating under a 1. The range on this car is pretty decent, but this fast charging rate is pretty slow. I always say that the best way to own an EV is with at-home charging, but if that's not possible, relying on DC charging only is an okay alternative. In this car though, I don't think that'd be the case, as you'd have to spend a considerable amount of time at a charger on a regular basis. If you do have your own charger at home, then owning this car should be totally fine. The refreshed Chevy Bolt feels very familiar, and that's a good thing. It's not a crazy high-tech or complicated car. It's a very simple EV with a few nice features, and that price drop with incentives makes it a tempting choice. Thanks for spending time with me today. Have an EV I can review? Email me at info at Make sure to subscribe for more EV content, and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai's my dog. 
And check out my website for more EV resources at kaizv.com. That's all for now, and happy charging.